Do you all know the secret behind how feudal lords and generals were able to conquer the Sengoku Japan? That's right, it was due to the actions and utilization of ninjas. In this video, I'll introduce ninjas with the top 10 ranking, so be sure to watch along until the end together. Hey there, it's Hiro from Chirak Japan. So let's dive right in and start with our number 10 pick, a figure shrouded in mystery. Yet yeah, undeniably fascinating, the ninja. Number 10. Fujibayashi Nagato no Kami. What makes this ninja remarkable is the fact that they fulfilled their duties as a ninja. But what does that really mean, you might wonder? Ninjas were esteemed for achieving their objectives without being discovered, accomplishing tasks discreetly and even meeting their end without leaving a trace. This particular ninja, therefore, remains shrouded in mystery due to the scarcity of historical records. However, it's intriguing to note that they are said to have taught ninjutsu to the samurai of the renowned warlord Takeda Shingen. Furthermore, the famous ninjutsu manual Bansen Shukai compiled in 1676 was actually authored by a descendant of Fujibayashi Nagato no Kami. Listening to this, it stirs up a sense of romance, doesn't it? Now let's move on to our number 9 pick, a ninja who added the touch of allure to their skills. Number 9. Mochizuki Chiyome. This ninja was, believe it or not, a female ninja. Unlike their male counterparts who engaged in open combat, female ninjas disguised themselves as shrine maidens and spread out across the country. They used seduction tactics on enemy nation's men, gained their affection, and infiltrated enemy castles to gather top secret information. They skillfully spread false information and circulated advantageous rumors among their allies. It's quite unbelievable, isn't it? This was like propaganda during the Warring States period. And now, let's move on to our next pick at number 8. Ninjas who dare to take on the fierce warlords of the Warring States period in reckless battles. Number 8. Momochi Tamba. Surprisingly, this ninja faced off against the renowned warlord Oda Nobunaga. In the years 1579 and 1581, Oda Nobunaga himself marched into what can be considered the very heartland of ninjas, the present day Mie Prefecture. Can you fathom the size of his armies? Brace yourselves, because in not one, but two battles, Oda Nobunaga commanded the staggering force of 50,000 enemy soldiers. Now, hold that thought. The local ninja in this region, they numbered just 1,600. As you might have guessed, the outcome was rather predictable. The ninja suffered a resounding defeat at the hands of Oda Nobunaga, and the toll was heavy and the casualties among the ninja, including civilians, reportedly reached a staggering 30,000. It's an astonishing chapter in history, one that reminds us of the clashes between legends and the stark realities they faced. It's time for our number 7 pick. This ninja was known by another name, the Sniper Ninja. This ninja too dared to challenge the warlords of the Warring States period and met a tragic fate. What exactly transpired? Let's delve into the story. Number 7. Sugitani Zenjubo. There were a faction of famous ninjas, part of the Koga clan. However, these ninjas were known for their skill in handling matchlock guns and gained fame by attempting to assassinate Oda Nobunaga. They fired two shots from a matchlock gun at a distance of about 22 yards at Nobunaga. Although the bullets narrowly missed him, the attempt was unsuccessful. Sugitani Zenjubo, the ninja in question, managed to escape. 
Nobunaga was greatly angered by this assassination plot and spent three years issuing a nationwide warrant to locate Sugitani Zenjubo. Oda Nobunaga's anger led to an extremely severe punishment for this ninja. Can you guess what kind of punishment it was? It wasn't a guillotine or anything like that, but it was incredibly terrifying. The punishment involved bullying them alive from the neck down in the ground and then using a saw to cut off their face while they were still alive. Well, it's truly beyond imagination, isn't it? Now, let me introduce you to number six. Our next story is about a ninja who destroyed a castle. Number six, Iganosaki Dojun. Long ago, there was a warrior named Momochi who was an ally in Iga. However, he eventually became a traitor. He established his stronghold in Sawayama Castle located in Shiga Prefecture, Japan. This castle stood on a steep mountain slope, making it a challenge fortress to conquer. Numerous attempts by samurai and the warriors to seize this castle ended in failure, earning it the reputation of an impregnable fortress. At such junction, a certain ninja was summoned. Yes, it was Iganosaki Dojun. He cunningly infiltrated the enemy camp disguised as an ally and set fire to the castle from within. The enemy camp fell into chaos and the castle quickly surrendered. It's truly astonishing that it was a ninja, not a samurai or warriors, who managed to capture the enemy's seemingly impregnable castle. Now, let's move on to number 5. This one's quite interesting. A ninja who accidentally ended up in a bath. Any guesses, folks? It's someone incredibly famous. Number 5. Ishikawa Goemon. This is the intriguing story of Ishikawa Goemon, a renowned figure in the world of ninjas. He was a disciple of the prestigious Momochi school in Iga. However, his life took a dramatic turn when he got involved in an affair with his ninja master's wife, leading to his flight and eventual fame as a notorious thief. But even as a thief, Goemon exhibited ninja-like skills. When infiltrating the estates of a samurai, he would disguise himself as a warrior, deceiving his enemies and stealing their treasures. He was also known for his audacious acts, such as cringing to kites to fly through the air and infiltrate enemy castles. One particularly daring feat involved sneaking into the renowned warlord Totomi Hideyoshi's castle at night to steal a precious incense burner. Goemon managed to reach Hideyoshi's sleeping chambers. However, just as he was about to succeed, the incense burner accidentally made a noise. The sound alerted Hideyoshi, who captured Goemon. After his capture, Goemon faced a public execution. That's quite extraordinary. Can you believe it? He was subjected to execution by being boiled alive in a bath of scorching hot water. Oh, it's truly frightening, isn't it? This bath of Goemon holds so many tragic memories. However, in modern day Japan, there are plenty of Goemon Bureau public bath houses scattered throughout the city where people bathe without a second thought. Now, let's move on to number four, an athlete like ninja. Number four, Karawasa Gemba. This ninja possessed astonishing physical abilities. He could jump up to approximately 2 yards without a running start and could leap from heights as great as 13 yards and land silently. He exhaled in the use of gunpowder and was skilled in attacking enemy castles at night using fire to raise them. Karawasa Gemba, who was more agile in ninja activities than anyone else, had a stroke of luck. 
he managed to steal a horse wearing a golden armor and brought it back with him. Now, let's introduce number three, a ninja who's almost like an entertainer. I'll explain why this ninja became interested in bringing joy to people. Number three, Kato Danzo. He was indeed a ninja, but he engaged in activities that seemed unrelated to ninja skills, street performances, to be precise, Kato Danzo, in front of a gathered audience, swallowed the whole cow. He also used the leaves, which miraculously caused the flowers to grow and bloom in an instant. But can you imagine why a ninja would do such things? Yes, it was to impress the renowned warlord, Takeda Shingen, and serve him as a ninja. Perhaps, it was a matter of ninja pride. Kato Danzo didn't belong to any particular ninja organization and might have felt lonely. As a result, he astonished Takeda Shingen with his street performances, ultimately leading to his employment under the Takeda clan. That's some remarkable determination, isn't it? Now, move on to number two ninja. This ninja is, well, quite strong. But here's the twist. Was he truly a ninja or a samurai? He was often misunderstood. Number 2. Hattori Hanzo Hattori was born into prestigious ninja lineage in 1542. However, during his early years, for some reason, his father ordered him to undergo training as a monk at the temple. He ended up running away and remained missing for several years. It's quite intriguing, isn't it? Why was Hattori Hanzo, a ninja by origin, recommended to follow the path of Buddhism? In the year 1557, there was an individual who, accompanied by several dozens of ninja groups, carried out a night raid on an enemy castle, achieving a significant military feat. That person was none other than Hattori Hanzo, who was in the midst of escaping. It's clear that even while on the run, the heart of a ninja remained steadfast. Despite this being his first battle, Hattori emerged victorious in a remarkable fashion. This caught the attention of the renowned daimyo, Tokugawa Ieyasu, who rewarded Hattori with a spear a symbol of his appreciation. But why the spear? I want you all to give this some thought. Since Hattori came from a ninja background, wouldn't you agree it would be nice to receive a gift like shuriken? Anyways, it's thanks to this spear that Hattori earned the reputation of being a master of the weapon. This brings up the question, was Hattori a ninja or a samurai? This topic has uh, sparked a quite a debate. And in 1582, Hattori Hanzo provided the assistance for a perilous mountain crossing as the region was fraught with bandits and rogue warriors. The recipient of his aid was none other than the renowned warlord Tokugawa Ieyasu. Hattori not only assisted in these journeys, but also served as a bodyguard for Ieyasu. Interestingly, in those times, the offer of a reward for capturing a warlord's head led to a sort of bounty hunting system where bandits lurked in the mountains in hopes of collecting a reward. The thought alone is quite terrifying. By the way, Japan has a staggering 70% of its land covered by mountainous terrain. Quite intimidating, isn't it? Hattori managed to safely fend off the bandits and the rogues with his ninja subordinates and successfully escorted Tokugawa Ies to his destination. Now, it's time for the highly anticipated number one ninja. Can you all guess who it is? This ninja has an unconventional and ultra-like vibe, yet still manages to be incredible cool. So, who is it? And number one. Fuma Kotaro. In the tumultuous Sengoku era, there existed a ninja known as the strongest of them all. His name was 
Fuma Kotaro. He served generation after generation under the powerful Hojo clan, the preeminent warlords of the Kanto region, and the united ninjas under his command to form a formidable ninja core. Well, folks, do you know the average height of samurai back in the day? It was around 5 feet 1 inch. Comparing that to the current average height in Japan, which is about 5 feet 8 inches, you can see people were shorter back then. But here's the astonishing part. This ninja stood at a staggering 7 feet 1 inch tall. Just for reference, the average height of players in the NBA, the professional basketball league in the United States, is around 6 feet 6 inches. That gives you an idea of just how tall this ninja was. Beyond the realm of ninjas, the Fuma ninja were not content with the primary role of ninjas, which is espionage, stealing information from enemies. Hey there, why do ninjas always have to be the unsung heroes behind the scenes? Even if you say that, it puts us in a difficult position. That's just how ninjas are. No, that won't do. Let's become legendary ninjas that even samurai and generals will be astonished by. Seriously, you're being quite unreasonable. So, why were the Fuma ninja so remarkably strong? The Fuma ninja were composed of notorious criminals such as bandits, pirates, thieves, and burglars. They were organized into teams, each consisting of 50 members, and the four such teams formed a highly skilled elite force of 200 individuals. They were even recognized by the shogun as a formidable military power, boasting a total strength of 10,000 soldiers. This holds relevance even in the present day, doesn't it? Yakuza Legendary Battle in the year 1546, a legendary battle took place known as the Battle of Kawagoe Castle. The Hojo forces, who had the support of the Fuma Ninja, had a mere 8,000 soldiers. On the other hand, their adversaries, a coalition of powerful lords and generals, boasted a staggering 80,000 soldiers. The Hojo forces realized they were severely outnumbered. However, they devised a remarkable strategy. Their plan was audacious. They decided to launch a surprise attack on the enemy camp without wearing armor, completely eliminating any sound of their footsteps. The Fuma Ninja infiltrated the enemy camp under the cover of night. They seized the opportunity, launching a fierce assault on the enemy and causing a tremendous commotion. This clever maneuver led to victory in a battle where they were greatly outnumbered. It's said that this battle showcased the power of strategy over sheer numbers. Oh, challenging battles completely naked. Now that's quite an audacious idea, isn't it? Well, how did you all find that? If you found the video even a bit intriguing, please hit the like button. Thank you as always. Until next time, chillax.